Welcome to a screencast on electrochemical cell calculations. The objectives of this screencast are for you to be able to relate cell potentials to free energy changes and to be able to perform calculations involving conversions between cell potentials, free energy changes, and equilibrium constants. Well, first of all, let's talk about cell potential and how it is related to free energy. And cell potential E is related to free energy G by this relationship where the free energy change delta G is equal to negative NFE where E is the cell potential, the potential for a particular electrochemical reaction, and N is the number of moles of electrons transferred during that electrochemical reaction, and F is the Faraday constant, which is 9.6485 times 10 to the fourth coulombs per mole, or uh, other units uh, are joules per volt mole. And basically, it's the charge of a mole of electrons in coulombs. It's named in honor of Michael Faraday, a scientist who did some groundbreaking uh, work in electricity and magnetism. And here's a uh, picture of Michael Faraday giving a public lecture in the mid-1800s. Now, when we talk about cell potential or free energy change, uh, sometimes, especially in electrochemical processes, it's nice to have sort of a way of thinking about this. And the typical analogy that's used uh, is of water, water and water energy and water flow. So here we have a dam, and the water at the top of the dam that's being held back by the dam is at a higher potential than the water at the bottom of the dam. And here you can think of higher potential and lower potential in terms of potential energy. So the water at the top has more stored energy, and when it flows downward, it uh, some of that energy can be used to turn a turbine and generate electricity or do something useful. The height of the dam uh, has to do or is related directly to how much energy is uh, stored in the water at the top. If the dam is taller, there's a higher potential, more stored energy. If the dam is not as tall, there's less stored energy relative to the bottom. And this is analogous to the cell potential. Cells with a bigger potential have more energy uh, potentially that can come from them. Uh, cells with a lower potential have less energy than can, that can come from them. And then the flow of water is analogous to the flow of electrons. And if we have a small amount of water flowing, even if there's a big potential, if you have very little flow of water, you're going to get very little energy. If you have more flow of water, you get more energy. And in electrical terms or electrochemical terms, the amount of water flowing as analogous to the amount of electrical current or the amount of electrons that flow uh, in a given amount of time. So this is the analogy that's often used um, relating electrical potential and electrical current to water potential and flow of water. And if we now move on and use this relationship so delta G is equal to negative NFE. So if we're at standard conditions, then delta G naught equals negative NFE naught. So this is our new relationship between delta G and cell potential. And if we remember from thermodynamics that delta G naught is equal to negative RT ln of K, then since delta G naught equals negative NFE naught, and delta G naught also equals negative RT ln of K, we can equate those two things. In other words, negative NFE naught equals negative RT ln of K. And note, we now have a relationship between E naught and K. And there's a couple different ways that we can uh, set this up and solve the equation. We can take this equation, divide both sides by negative NF, if we divide both sides by the same thing, it's still an equation. And then canceling out similar uh, things on both sides. So we can cancel out negative NF on this side 
and cancel out the negative side sign on this side. So that then reduces to E naught equals, neg, uh, equals RT over NF times ln of K. So here's one way of writing this equation, E naught in terms of K. And of course, we can also solve this relationship for K basically by putting the RT and NF on the other side of the equation and then taking the inverse of the LN function. And if we do that, we get K, the equilibrium constant, equals E to the, and this is all in the exponent, NF E naught over RT. So we now have equations relating delta G and delta G naught and E and E naught. And from our previous equation relating delta G naught to K, we now can also relate E naught to K or K to E naught. So these relationships are uh, quite useful in electrochemistry. And let's do an example. And the example is one we've seen previously in electrochemical cell. Uh, this is the reaction of copper 2 plus with zinc to make copper and zinc 2 plus and that has a standard cell potential of 1.10 volts. So first of all, let's calculate the delta G naught value, the standard Gibbs free energy change for this reaction at 25 degrees Celsius. Well, the relationship that we've just been uh, introduced to is that delta G naught, the thing we want to calculate, equals negative NF E naught, and N and F are known constants, and E naught is given in this problem. So when we plug in those values, we have two moles of electrons transferred. The copper 2 plus gains two electrons to make copper solid. The zinc solid loses two electrons to make zinc 2 plus. Um, if you look at the half reactions and the balanced equation, you can figure out the number of electrons transferred. The constant is 9.6485 times 10 to the fourth coulomb per mole, so the moles will cancel, and then multiply by the cell potential, 1.10 volts. And if we note that coulombs times volts is the same thing as joules, then we have for our answer negative 212,000 joules and it's a big enough number it probably makes sense to make this into kilojoules so negative 2000 sorry negative 212 kilojoules is the delta g naught for this uh, reaction and given that that's a fairly big negative number this tells us that the reaction is very spontaneous and very product favored which is of course the same thing that the positive 1.10 volts told us Okay, let's do another calculation, uh, and this time let's calculate the equilibrium constant for this reaction and see what this value means. Well, we can calculate the equilibrium constant via the, via the equation K equals E to the NF E naught over RT, which we've just been introduced to, or of course we can use the thermodynamics equation we've seen previously, K equals E to the negative delta G naught over RT. And in this case, let's use the new equation, the one uh, dealing with the cell potential, standard cell potential. So K is equal to E to the NF E naught over RT. And if we plug in all the values as previously seen, N is two moles, uh, R, or sorry, F is of course the same value as we saw before. Cell potential is 1.10 volts. R is the, um, e, the energy constant. We have to use that in units of joules per Kelvin. And then T is of course the temperature, 25 degrees Celsius in Kelvin. And then notice our units, moles will cancel with moles. Kelvin per Kelvin will cancel with uh, Kelvin and coulombs times volts is joules as we saw previously that will cancel with joules in the denominator and that ends up equaling 1.6 times 10 to the 37th so we have a very very big number for k for the k value the equilibrium constant and a very very big k value means the reaction is very spontaneous or very product favored which is of course what we uh, deduced from determining delta G naught and also from the E naught value. 
So let's just uh, summarize by comparing these three quantitative measures of spontaneity of reaction. E naught is 1.1 volts, it's a positive number. Delta G naught is negative 212 kilojoules, it's a negative number. And K is 1.6 times 10 to the 37th, it's a very big number. And all three of these things essentially mean the same thing. They mean we have a very spontaneous, very product favored uh, reaction. And uh, you notice it's sort of different scales here. E is a smallish number compared to delta G, which is negative, but much, much bigger. And then K, of course, is an even bigger number yet because we're using different um, quantitative measures. Even though they mean the same thing, the numbers look fairly uh, different, at least superficially. And that is it for electrochemical cell calculations.